we celebrate today the feast of all saints. The readings chosen for the feast are such that they invite us to look back at the saints who have gone before us and to look forward to what will be. When I say they ask us to look back, I mean they ask us to be inspired by the lives of so many men and women who have lived selfless and loving and giving lives in imitation of their Lord Jesus before them that they are recognized today and they are canonized as saints. It tells us, however, that that is not only the story, that is only part of the story. The story will be completed when we realize, each of us, that because we have also been called by Jesus, because we also are his disciples, we too can be saints. There is a song, two of the lines of that song go like this. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. And each of us can be and must be in that number when the saints go marching in. This is the inspiration, this is the challenge, this is the call of the Feast of All Saints. In the Gospel text of today, we hear the first of the five discourses of Jesus titled the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus goes up on a high mountain, sits down, invites his disciples to come to him, opens his mouth and begins to teach them. The Sermon on the Mount begins with what we call the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes are a blessing which Jesus pronounces and for a reason. And in the Gospel of Matthew, there are eight Beatitudes that he pronounces. At first glance, it might seem to us that the kind of people on whom the Beatitudes are pronounced are different people. They are the poor in spirit, they are the meek, they are those who moan, they are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness sake. However, a little deeper reflection will make us realize that they are not different people but the same kind of person. Just because a person is poor in spirit does not mean that that person will not moan or not be gentle or not be pure in heart. No, Jesus pronounces these beatitudes on one kind of person, a person who lives after the heart of Jesus. And so the first of these eight beatitudes is pronounced on those who are poor in spirit. This term poor in spirit surely includes the economically poor, the marginalized and the oppressed. Why are they blessed? Why is a blessing pronounced on them? Because they have no other means of dependence but God. And to them is promised the kingdom of heaven. Because their only dependence is God, because their only support is God, they will receive the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven as their inheritance. The second beatitude is pronounced on the meek or on the gentle. The meek does not mean the gullible. The meek does not mean a person who will not respond. The meek certainly means a person who will respond but will not react. The meek will never use violence as their way of proceeding. The meek will never fight against anyone in a physical manner as their way of reacting. They will be aware of what is happening to them and when necessary they will turn the other cheek and at other times they will stand up strongly, emphatically and assertively for their rights. But they will never use 
violence as a means to gain that right. The ones who mourn are mourning not for a personal or a private loss, not because they have lost something themselves, but are mourning because of the state that the world is in. When God created the world, he meant everyone to live in harmony. He meant people to love one another. He meant people to care for one another. He meant people to go out to one another. But when these look at the world, they realize that things are not as they ought to be. There is selfishness galore. People are going their own way. Each one is concerned only about him or herself. And this is what their mourning is about. They are the ones who also therefore hunger and thirst for righteousness in the world, for justice of God, for mercy among people, that people will strive to live together in harmony and it is on them that the blessing or the beatitude is pronounced. They will be satisfied. The merciful are imitators of God because our God is a God of mercy. Our God is a God of forgiveness. Our God is a God of pardon. Our God is a God of acceptance. And so the merciful will also have mercy shown to them. As a matter of fact, because the merciful have received God's unconditional mercy, they can be merciful in return. And these are the same who are able to see God as God is because they are undivided in their love, they are pure in heart. Pure in heart doesn't only mean that a person will try not to commit sin. Pure in heart means that a person is one-pointed and focused on God. The person is aware of others, but yet the focus is God because the person's devotion to God expressed in devotion to neighbor is seen very clearly in that person's life. The peacemakers are the ones who work towards reconciliation. The peacemakers are ones who do not take personal affront when things do not go their way. They want to reach out in reconciliation like God reaches out. They want to forgive as God forgives. They want to accept as God does. And finally, the beatitude is pronounced on those who are persecuted in the cause of right. And there are so many in our country and all over the world who are being persecuted for standing up for the truth, for standing up for their values of not willing to let go, of not backing down. These are the ones on whom Jesus pronounces this beatitude when he tells them that it is there the kingdom of heaven will be built and the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. In the second reading, John tells us that we who have been chosen by the Lord to be his disciples are blessed because we have been taught by God and by Jesus to call God Father. Our God is not a God whom we are frightened of. Our God is not a God whom we must look at only from afar. Our God is a God to whom we can go as close as is possible because this God has been revealed in Jesus. If we can call God our father and our mother and our brother and our sister and our lover and our friend, how close we must be to God. This is the number of 144,000 whom the first reading speaks about. The 12,000 of the 12 tribes, which means actually every single person is chosen to be in that number. On this Feast of All Saints, we ask ourselves this question of why it is true on the one hand that we are inspired by those who have gone before us, we are taken up with their lives and we want to imitate them. We also tell ourselves on this feast that we also can be in that number. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in.